crashing when it's gone. Ha! Well, hello, hello Rhonda. Welcome to Willie's Garage. I'm Nick, a lifelong ALF fan, and that's George watching the series for the first time. Hi, George. Hey, Nick. How We're you doing? doing <laughs> I like this repartee we've got going. <laughs> just part of just the chilled out vibes here in Willie's garage. Uh, we're, we're doing a little something different today because this week in ALF history, you know, we're kind of watching the episodes the week they aired uh, in 1986, but in 2020 and beyond. And this week, ALF was not on. I don't know why. Uh, maybe it was preempted for something, a special, but uh, it wasn't on. So we decided to have on our very first uh, guest a writer named David Stephen Cohen. And I knew uh, David Cohen from, he was always in the Simpsons credits as David S. Cohen. And I was like, oh, is that the same guy? And then it was David X. Cohen in Futurama because he needed to change it. David Stephen Cohen uses Stephen because it's a different David Cohen. But this guy has just uh, as storied a, of a career in working in TV. He's worked in animation. He's worked on Basically, some of my favorite shows from my childhood, Parker Lewis, Can't Lose. He's worked on Alf Tales, uh, the cartoon, Alf. Um, Pee-wee's Playhouse. Pee-wee's Playhouse, uh, a Steve Martin special, um, Tiny Toons, Strangers with Candy was one of his later credits. And he's still working today. And um, we thought we'd have him on to talk a little uh, Alf and find get some insider dirt. We're always coming up with questions to ask. And uh He's in Brooklyn, and we're all sequestered here, so why not? Absolutely. All right, let's see what uh, David Stephen Cohen has to say in this Q and Alf. It's time for Q and Alf. Q and Alf. Q and A L F spells Alf. I could explain everything. We're um, excited to have you because we've been thoroughly analyzing Alf, um, and um, I know that. We are friends on Facebook, um, and I, I think the way I got or you got in touch with me is I, I posted a picture of a coat made of uh, Burger King elf puppets, and you said, <laughs> hey, I, I worked on that show. And I was like, uh. what? Um, this was pre-pandemic, and I was like, let's get lunch, and then we got busy, but now, here we are. So thanks for coming on. My pleasure. In 1988, you come on Alf, and right. it's, I, I think like uh, it's, it's had a couple of seasons under its belt but still a pretty popular show oh yeah and uh and they bring you and your writing partner on and uh i guess just based on your pedigree and working on i saw you wrote for peewee's playhouse as well and i mean so many credits uh it, especially in in that i don't know like how you did it all but um i, how, I don't either how did you uh get on elf what was your um reaction i know like all writers rooms are different what was what was it like working there um it was interesting it's always kind of weird walking into you know becoming being the new people on the staff in a show's third season um you know we we had gotten friendly with some of the i, I think i knew one one or two of the writers who had been on the show um but it took us you know it wasn't a difficult show to learn, you know. Uh, Alf's voice uh, as a writer was sort of easy to write. One of the, I think Roger and I were always very good at both musical and we could hear characters' voice as well. And Alf was very specific, um, as was Willie, you know. I mean, the two of them, almost a classic comedy team. And we used to, and Roger and I would sit around and, and imitate Alf and Willie. He would do Willie <laughs> and I would do Alf. And, and uh, it's pretty good. Uh, well, yeah, you know, it's it's like the one imitation I can do, you know, legitimately right. <laughs> well. Um, but it 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 was uh, it was interesting because it, it 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 was a broad comedy, but it's sort of a, the classic, you know, I've got this creature, this talking horse, this space alien, this. Uh, uh, you know, wife who's a witch, very 60s concept, you know, of, yeah. we can't reveal this to the world. And uh, it was, it was, what, what was really most, uh, what was most interesting in the experience was there was a writer strike soon after we started. And uh, we came back to New York, but 
before the strike, just before the strike, we were asked if we would also work on uh, Alf Tales, the second Alf cartoon for Saturday morning, Alf's versions of fairy tales and legends. And we loved the idea. And it was, you know, like fractured fairy tales from Rocky and Bullwinkle. And, uh, and what happened was we, we went on strike. <laughs> we couldn't work on Alf primetime. But as it turns out, the Writers Guild doesn't, we learned, doesn't cover animation for the most part, not because they don't want to. And I called the Guild and said, and we came back to New York to strike <laughs> because that's where we really lived at the time. And, yeah. uh, and I called the Writers Guild. I said, is it okay to work on a, a cartoon? I'm asking for a friend during the strike. Yes, and hire as many striking writers as you can. And we hired a bunch of folks who went on to work on shows far more popular and successful than the shows I went on to work on. Oh gosh, I remember. I just had. I remember. I went to I, I, when we the day we got Alf Tales. I was so excited that I had the biggest panic attack of my life at Hamburger Hamlet on <laughs> Sunset in Doheny. It was. <laughs> uh, it just came back to me, but I won't have one now. Um, <laughs> You know, it's even hard to explain to somebody. Well, I just got Alf Tales, and I'm doing Alf at the same time. And you know, like, <laughs> how do you explain that in a hamburger restaurant? Well, it's it, you know, really, it was just for me. It was like, oh, this is something I've wanted to do—a cartoon with like parodies of fairy tales and legends and Alf. And wow, oh my god, I, I'm freaking out. <laughs> and that <laughs> you know? show was like uh, ended up the the cartoon, which we haven't covered yet on our uh, Goofy show, but the. Uh, Cartoon was such a hit that there were Wendy's tie-ins. I know I've seen a few of those. Uh, how did this work? Oh, there. Look, look I can, magic. Just, just you know, <laughs> take my hand out of the shot, and you'll see it's flying magically. Sure, I'll green, yeah, I'll just this is green screen that out. Yeah. From I guess the magic <laughs> carpet from Aladdin, and here's um, I guess this is Little Red Riding Hood. I'm not even sure if this was this wasn't he wasn't Little Red. I think they made these without really seeing what the <laughs> so you didn't have much of a say over what got produced there and this is i, I guess looks ha, 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 ha. It, it seems like he's singing oh yeah he's here. singing something there yeah <laughs> yeah um did you i know george but, uh, you were asking about like what did you have any control over the merchandising because oh there's some of the tops cards yep wow so yeah. yeah, like how I mean, you come into the show, it's already a phenomenon, but it's just it's merchandised everywhere and knockoffs right. and everything like that. Like, how aware were you of this phenomenon? What are, what are some of the weirder things you've seen? Well, I I began to realize. Well, the, I certainly was aware of the popularity, and uh, it's always a relief when you join a show that is successful because it's got a glow to it, you know, and people know about it and you don't have even, you know, 30 years in the future, you don't have to explain to them what the show was. <laughs> right. And uh, subsequently I, I, I got to realize, especially when the internet uh, allowed access to people around the world, what a huge hit it was every Germany, particularly, I think, um, you know, and at the time I was just, when you work in TV, you have a different kind of, you know, you're working really hard and often around the clock. Uh, you know, I think they pay you a lot. So, so you know, because it's like taking years off your life. So it's an even rate of exchange, I guess. You know, it, it, I was aware of Alf, but I hardly watched a lot. I hardly watched TV when I was, you know, working and get, you know, really sinking into prime time. Um, so, you know, when we walked in, it was like, it was it was magical. Um, it was the season after Jerry Stahl worked there, uh, who wrote Permanent Midnight. So we had heard that you know there was a guy with a drug problem who worked there before and has you know yeah. worked it through. So we knew that there was like we were walking into a place that had just recovered from drama. Um, but we we you know we kept it as light as we could and uh, and it was just fun. I mean, writing writing for Alf and Willie really was like writing for a classic comedy team and, and it just felt great. I have a question about the challenge. There's like a unique challenge, I, I would guess, for writing a sitcom in the 80s in that um, only so much could really happen between the beginning and end insofar as like a character arc because the idea is like people might miss a week and, you know, it's not like a like a weekly 
soap opera or drama or something, right? I'm sorry. I just realized I had a thing at the corner of my mouth this whole time. <laughs> so if if you could just go back and just, you know, I'll digitally take that digitally out. Digitally well. remove it. You got it. Thanks. Yep. Okay. And we'll see we'll see uh, Aladdin Alf floating across the street. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> we'll, 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 put, see we'll put Aladdin Alf over it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the whole time. Uh, I'm sorry. Please go back to your question. Okay. <laughs> no, so I, I was saying that like sit, sitcoms only, in a way, only so much can happen as far as like characters changing over the course of it because you know there's going to be 25 episodes. They might be in syndication, shown out of order. You don't right. Um, and then plus, so that's that would be true. I would guess of a lot of 80s sitcoms. But on top of it, you have this merchandising phenomenon. You don't want to like. Um, do anything like out of character or something that I don't know. I, I would just want you to talk about like the, the, um, the challenges and how you overcame them as a writer. I think the question really could be applied to virtually any job I've had writing episodes of, uh, you know, whether it's a children's show and a primetime show, animation, not you know, live action. Um, it is a challenge and it's, it's Kind of why it's good to be the other side and you know, being the new kids in 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 uh, in town you you have a little maybe some fresh perspective after a couple of seasons on a show you know I, the longest i spent on one show was i was the head writer on courage the cowardly dog for four seasons all four seasons and wow. uh yeah and believe me well into you know at some point in season three the head starts spinning and you know it's never really like writer's block, but you try to get something fresh. And what happens with shows, this is, this is really, I think, an interesting point. Uh, networks try to, f you know, fidget with shows. When I was on Parker Lewis, it wasn't performing as well as they had hoped because it was a very, it was a niche audience. And they tried to make the show more like Beverly Hills 90210, a show that it was not. Right. Uh, so with ALF, you had, you had a successful show and the network wasn't really trying to mess with it, but you have this tension where you have this character who's hidden and who do we reveal him to? Right. You know, it's like you want to expand the premise. And um, so in a, with a show like Alf, you can get claustrophobic because he's stuck in the house. So you have to find ways to open it up. So that was kind of a challenge. Um, an episode that Roger and I wrote, uh, I remember it was called Standing in the Shadows of Love. And it was a very much a Cyrano de Bergerac episode where he was feeding lines to the neighbor's kid, uh, 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 Jake Akmanik. I wow. just watched that today, that episode. Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> I just, I just rewatched that. Yeah, it was a Cyrano episode, which was, right. yeah, he, he was out feeding lines to Jake. To woo yeah, the I, of a girl. I still get two or three cents uh, occasionally for that episode playing <laughs> in the Netherlands. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that was always the tension of Alf almost revealing himself, mm -hmm. you know, was in there. But every show presents its own individual, you know, issues in terms of coming up with good stories. And I always go to my own experiences, even on a show like Alf, you know, uh, You've I hidden always, in that alien, right? In your in your own house. Yes, I, I have. Uh, much like uh, uh, the movie Alien, I have an inner alien. Ah, but he's not going to bust out of my chest. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, he's very he's very happy staying inside. Um, but you do you, you internalize characters. It, it's interesting. I mean, you know, I, I would sometimes talk like Alf for a little while, just sort of getting the rhythm of it. Um, and the show also had interesting limitations because of the way it was shot. The entire uh, set was built like four feet off the ground so that Paul Fusco could, you know, operate ALF. And uh, it was magical. I mean, it really was. And there were a couple of folks off camera operating servo motors. By, I mean, it's the 80s, but it was still, we had wireless communications at that time too. And uh so those were operating the eyes and the eyebrows? The eyes and, and maybe eyebrows, ear movements. Um, you know, it was a very, the, the, I, I've, you know, I've worked with Muppets since then. I've worked with other, you know, 
a simulacra of life and um Alf was remarkable. You could sit, you could stand there, and and the, the story about how Fusco sold the show. Uh, you know, you you talk to you're talking to this puppet, but suddenly you forget that the puppeteer is there, and and uh, uh, apparently Alf he had Alf pick his nose and wipe it on Brandon Tartakoff's lapel. Uh, if, if, you sold. know. Uh, yeah, it kind of, it kind of, yeah, get him out of the office quickly and give him a show. It, uh, it, give him- it is weird too, like in in a show like that with the puppet train. Like I was an intern on uh, Mystery Science Theater three thousand that oh. was also built on a four foot stage, and I remember at one point there was uh, some sort of little rodent had crawled in the guts of you know the the stage and died, and nobody could find it. So every time the hot lights went on to film, it just smelled like roadkill. And everyone just had to kind of cover their mouth and deal with it. It was never found uh, in the whole show. And wow. I know some, sometimes the actors on Alf, you'll read that there was just a lot of stops and starts. There's no live studio audience. It was kind right. of a, a grueling shoot. Were you there for the, the shoot or were you mostly behind the scenes? It, you know, when, when you're a writer and you're sort of early in your career, you're, you're beginning a climb to executive producer showrunner. And I think, you know, it was our second or third show, um, third, maybe third or fourth. But, you know, we were on the set. So you, you want to be involved, as involved as possible, because you really want to understand how the show is produced. You want to learn for the future. It's like going to school. But it behooves the writers to be involved in the production so they get a broader feeling for what the show can and can't do. Suddenly you see something you've written and it's become a logistical problem that wasn't anticipated. And uh, you try to come up with, you know, a quick fix. Um, so, you know, we, we split our time between the writer's room and being on the, we weren't producers on the show. So we really weren't, you know, in that position yet. So we were focusing on the writing, but, it, uh, you know, as with the, we only did a couple of scripts for Pee Wee's Playhouse. When you're working on a show that's magical, like Alf or Pee Wee, you sort of want to be on the set. Yeah. Even even when nobody else is, you would wander onto it, you know, and just like experience it. But with Alf, it really was a lot of, um, you know, you. It it, it was uh, logistically magnificent. It was it was architecturally magnificent, and Alf himself was uh, an incredible puppet. And there was and just so alive and for rehearsals they would use ralph rehearsal alf uh which was basically an alf puppet that didn't come out of the mold quite well you know and and he was like really ratty and 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 paul fusco would use that so you don't want to wear out the real but he 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 it had he had a different personality this was alf like 20 years from now on the skids, you know, recovering. And, and, and he just had a, a dark sense of humor. It was, that was a show that I wish I well, that, had that's been a on good, the air. That's a great segue to the, the discussion of whether or not an, an ALF reboot uh, could happen. I mean, there are rumors about it for yeah. years. Um, do you think it would work? Um do you, how would you change it to update it for 2020? It would be interesting, actually, now that you mention it, uh, to have an ALF, I, I mean, just, just at this moment, ALF during a pandemic, you know, it, it endless possibilities there. Right. Uh, we're living, uh, we're living ALF's life now. We're all in we're lockdown. We're all claustrophobic. We, yeah. Right. And, and when we go out, we put on masks as Alf would need to do. You know, he would he would have to disguise himself somehow. <laughs> um, so so we 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 are not only Spartacus, we are Alf uh, as well. Um, <laughs> Alf has never gone away. He'll still turn up on commercials. I don't know. Maybe it's been a couple of years, but he was on Hollywood Squares a lot. And he was, you know, he's iconic and you could just walk into the middle of anything you're watching and you'd know who he was. And if you didn't, uh, you'd, you'd figure it out pretty quickly. Um, you know, I, one of the things, I mean, look, 
Alf Tales was interesting because it took Alf and put him in the middle of fairy tales and legends and used his character as sort of an actor. And, uh, and then we, we did an episode and this is, this is, this, this was always something I, I, I hoped Alf would do would be to have his own talk show. We did an episode where he hosted the tonight show when Johnny Carson was the host yeah. and it was, they sent us the I actually have a picture of me sitting on the couch with Ed McMahon. I'm pointing at it on the wall over there. I didn't bring it over here. Uh, in between uh, uh, shots, I wasn't, but it, it looks for all the world. Like I was on The Tonight Show. Wow. Um, and uh, Mike Reese and Al Jean, who had written the season before and went on to The Simpsons, they had worked on The Tonight Show. They had written for Carson. So they came back and we did this hour special. Uh, they sent us their like second string set, their backup set, and we set it up in the studio. And that was amazing. That was just like, a different experience and Al, Alf was hosting the tonight show. And since then I have always wanted him to have, I thought he'd be great hosting a talk show. So, yeah. uh, and has, has that been done? Did they do that? I it think sounds it, so familiar. I think in like 2005, he did like six episodes. It was just sort yeah. of a short run, but it, they could definitely bring that back now. Cause yeah, you're right. It is sort of a classic comic character, you know, and if there's a foil for him, then it's a, it's that classic formula, you know, the uptight foil and, you know, kind of the, the Marx brother character, the obnoxious one. You'd think that's sort of a timeless archetype, you know, Well, who knows, maybe after all this time, Alf has aged into the straight man. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. He's calmed down and <laughs> there's some oh, yeah, this pressure a... alien out there. Well, maybe, maybe it's it's his, his twin cousin from you know it's very proper like the Patty Duke show shows up and is <laughs> oh that's uh, good I like that one you know the, the, <laughs> yeah, so good to, what are you talking about stop with that <laughs> it's just so impolite shut up <laughs> oh man that's the show right there yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, the, the, yeah, I'd, I'd spend more time on the writing than I just did. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I we our goal is to get Alf on this show, and I don't know if you have a have a uh, a, a tip for how we might do that. Um, I, I recently, apparently, just through through Alf's fan club, got a you know a, an offer to have him come on on this show, but uh, I didn't hear back. But I got an email from somebody claiming to be Gordon Shumway with a Gordon Shumway eighty six email. <laughs> You tell me if you think this is if this is Alf or this is some Joker. Hey Nick, I just wanted to say I'm loving the show. I'm really enjoying this retrospective on my life. Ha! Huh. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, uh, you, you did a passable Alf impression. That sounds like a passable Alf impression, or maybe it's maybe it's him. I don't know. Sounds like a passable Alf impression. Okay. Yeah. Um. But I think but, Paul Paul would probably have more to say. That was that was, um, I think, the biggest tell too. There wasn't much funny in there. It was just pretty boilerplate thanks and a ha at the end, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's yeah. Paul Paul would have uh, given it far more flourish than that. I think. <laughs> okay. And if it was you, Paul, I, I apologize. Uh, you know, I, I thought it was quite flourishing. Uh, yeah, uh, I think, I think the despite audio, what I said, <laughs> I think the audio fidelity would have been better, but. Is there is there a uh, a tip, some sort of uh, way you think we might be able to to make that work? Um, well, I, I'll I'll send a message uh, through uh, my uh, network of of Alfites. <laughs> oh, that would be uh, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm still friendly with Mike Reese, uh, who who does see Paul, I think, from time oh, nice. to time, that, okay. uh, and and. Uh, Steve Papoon, uh, you know, a lot of people, look, Steve, I see on Facebook more, more mm -hmm. often. Uh, he was there I've, maybe since the first season. Uh, he might have been the longest staff, the longest running staff member. I'm not sure. Um, but I'll, you know, I'll put the word out and, and you know, <laughs> we could actually have a writer's reunion of some, that would of, be, at, at least. I'd be happy to, we, we could moderate that. I would just, I would love to hear the stories. That would be fun. Um, yeah, yeah, but you know, my there are there. Are, I mean, Steve Papoon's stories about the Gilligan's Island episode are probably 
just listening to him wax rhapsodic about that experience. I wasn't there. It was the season yeah. before. Oh man. That's gotta be fun as a sitcom writer to take the sitcoms you grew up and with, and then have like Bob Denver come on <laughs> in the Gilligan outfit. And I mean, just like surreal stuff. Yeah. It, it's, uh, it's really, I mean, working in television, one of it, it, it's magical. It is surreal. I suddenly, I mean, it's wonderful to be working with Alf, but suddenly you're also working with people you grew up watching or whose credits you grew up watching as a, you know, as a young, young kid. I was always reading who wrote the show and who directed. Yeah. And, and uh, it is uh, uh, an incredible reward and a little dangerous to sort of meet your heroes, whether they're on or off screen, because you don't want them to be assholes. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, yeah. you tentatively, because, you know, I've met people who I've heard were not, you know, the kindest people, but I've, I've only, I've had good experiences. I, I had yeah. one bad experience and I won't even say with whom, and it was, it's barely worth mentioning. It was in an airport and I bothered him. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so it really wasn't fair, but um, it, you know, I still, you know, I think back to what I've done and what I still do. And, and I, I think about things that happen. Wow. Wait a minute. I surprised myself. That really happened. You know, I, uh, you know, the, the experience of it, and, just and working and but it becomes a job i mean yeah you know you have it's, it's like you're killing you're writing a script you're rewriting a script you're rewriting a script and often you're getting notes from the network um and and the studio that aren't necessarily in sync with each other and you're trying to make everything work and because alf was shot in bits and pieces throughout the week it wasn't like we were rewriting it every day building to a friday taping you know, it was more like doing a film show. So when a script was done, it was more or less done. You know, you didn't get changed after dress rehearsal. Um, I want to talk about your uh, what you're doing now and also the fact that you're a songwriter, too. <laughs> I don't know if you ever got to use that on ALF, but I know you've, you know, written stuff that's been performed at, at Lincoln Center and, and in animation and things like that. So talk a little bit about what, what you've been up to lately. Well, uh, it's, it's interesting that an episode of ALF that, I, I, I pitched, which did not uh, go over well, you know, in terms of, you know, comedic potential, I guess people didn't see that was simply uh, a dream of mine. And this was well into the 80s. John Lennon was killed in 1980. And I wanted Alf to believe he was getting messages from the beyond from John Lennon with partially finished songs. And he had to contact Paul McCartney. <laughs> and that was my my way of trying to get Paul McCartney on the show, but apparently the, the idea of invoking the thought of a beloved <laughs> celebrated hero who'd been tragically murdered, uh, uh, scared people away from the pure comedy it would have, uh, uh, <laughs> it would have brought uh, in Alf's hands. Oh, but I can see uh, it in my head. I can see the whole episode. Well, um, it can still happen now for the <laughs> Alf reboot. Yeah. Um, well, it's not too late. <laughs> well, the movie yesterday kind of flips that in in a way. I, right. I don't want to give things away, but um, you know, it, it, I it, well, for Alf Tales, we did a lot of uh, we wrote a bunch of songs. Roger and I. Roger was also, also very musical, and we would write songs together. Um, and uh, it's always been my passion. Th thankfully. I, I didn't grow to hate it as much as I occasionally grow to hate writing because it's not my primary occupation. Uh, and I love writing music. I mean, it's, it's it, lyrics, particularly, I just love wordplay. And uh, one of my favorite things with Alf Tales was being able to get a little more creative with the use of words because of the, you know, it was a different kind of show entirely and to do song parodies like, old uh, uh, doing Cinderella as an Elvis movie, you know, or, or the, the Aladdin story as a, as a Hope and Crosby road picture, if right. that means anything to anybody now. Yeah. Uh, and it should. Um, and then I did a series of, of musicals uh, for Nickelodeon uh, based on Dr. Seuss characters, the Wobbyless world of Dr. Seuss. These are half hour musicals. We did 20 of them in the first season. Uh, and that was just, like a dream come true. Like sometimes I'll get the idea. Oh, I'd love to do a series of half hour musicals. Oh wait, I did. 
<laughs> I'd like to do it again. Yeah, why not? Uh, you know, so and and Jody Gray, who I met uh, on on uh, Courage the Cowardly Dog, he was the music director. We're working on a on a, a, a very dark, twisted version of a popular children's tale, combining it with something far more horrific. And I don't want to go into too much detail okay. now because it's it's something that. I would like to sell um, yeah. <laughs> and 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 it, it all started with a song I thought I was just writing a song and as things happen you said wow this this is not just a song this is this wants to be this is this might be the final song in a musical so um, can you play a little bit for us can you play uh, uh, some music for us well let me let me, let me see if I uh, <laughs> if I have my oh here's my ukulele Oh, I was, I was hoping it would be there. Let's see. I'm in love with your sister's ukulele, much more so than reason would allow. I would strum her all night, least from her daily. I prefer her to the one I'm playing now. I'm sorry. You have got a fine kazoo, and I dig getting jiggy with your didgeridoo. But your sister's uke has got me on my knees. Her dog has fleas. I'm in love with my sister's, your sister's ukulele. But your sister's ukulele's in love with. So that's delightful. Oh, is that okay? Great. Thanks. I got it. I, I want to finish. <laughs> If, if we can't get Elf on the show, I hope we can at least get Ralph. I hope that maybe somewhere <laughs> we can dig him out of a, a chest somewhere and have his irascible, kind of dejected, uh, shabby self come on. Well, that's, that's, well uh, I, I'll try my best. Hang on a second. Is there a building next to the Smithsonian? They might have, <laughs> yeah. they might have you know, the secondary of everything there. Yeah. I just wanted... Uh, I, I'll try to put the word out. This is... I found this stuff because you invited me on. This yeah. is my ALF binder. Oh, whoa. Holy cow. So that's where scripts would go in? and Yeah, this week's scripts would go into my ALF binder. And that's the, That goes in the Smithsonian right there. I opened drawers. I'm sorry, I'm keeping you longer, but look at this. No, look no. at this. I, I, this is all like art from ALF tales, you know? Whoa, those are like the cells? Not the cells. These were, oh. you know, I don't know, production stills, I suppose. Oh yeah! Wow, mm. this, this is the original script for our Cinderella episode. Whoa! Right there, and and I will tell you my one quick story uh, about about notes from the network. This was yeah. my ex first experience getting notes on a cartoon. For, on it was when there were Saturday morning cartoons on NBC. We had written uh, Alf's introduction. Alf walks out and says. Welcome, yeah. children, to a time of fantasy and adventure, a time of glory and magic, a time years before you were born, a time called 1962. And then a car passes in front of him and he says, Ward, June. And, and it was a Leave it to Beaver reference. Ward and June were Beaver's parents. Yeah. And at the time, there was no TV land. Leave it to Beaver was not back in the common, you know, uh, uh, in common awareness. So the note from the network was kids won't get Ward in June. And I said, well, what do you want us to put in there instead? Something they, well, anything else. I mean, like Bob and Margaret. Yeah, fine. And I said, but that's a joke for the parents. It's value added. You, you want us to remove the joke that the kids wouldn't alienate. We kept it in. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Cause then you change it to something that no one gets. Not, not right. That's right. Right. You know, but it was uh, it was fun figuring out how to get certain. We we got a few things into the cartoon that probably uh, uh, snuck past oh, <laughs> standards good. and practices. Well, this has been a blast. Yeah, thanks. Oh, he, he's flying away. Yep, look at through the magic of Hollywood, he's just kind of flying away. <laughs> thanks for well, thank uh, thanks so for hanging out in Willie's garage. It's been a pleasure. I love what you've done with the place. <laughs> 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 I don't do it. Yeah, that's Paul Fusco's pro. That's his. That's that's his thing. And and I I just I honor him 
when I endeavor to fall into the alpha voice. It's that, it's that's all great anyway, love. That's all we're trying to do too. So, uh, <laughs> all right. Thanks again. Appreciate all the time, Dave. A pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you guys. All right. So long. It's time for Q and L. Q and L. Q and A L F spells Alf. I could explain everything. Thanks again to uh, David. Nice guy. Interesting. It, it's just interesting to hear how a, a sitcom worked. And it sounds like uh, even though people like Jerry Stahl were miserable and some of the actors were, that he had a pretty fun time working on, on Alf and talked about how magical it was. It's That was kind of Yeah, his memories were, seemed very pleasant. Yeah. And I, I didn't let you talk at all or ask any questions because I was so excited about this. Well, and that's what I love about about this show in general, but that interview specifically is <laughs> watching you as much as anything else because it's uh, it's a kid in in a candy store, and that candy is elf shaped. Oh yeah, and uh, is, is old and in a tops container. Or yes. what was it? Was that yes. tops that made the yes. elf candy? Yeah, we we talked up top about what um, was on this week in 1986. Why wasn't Alf on? And you did some digging during the break here. Yes, according to the TV Guide archives, a sh new show called A Year in the Life was having a mini series intro, and it only lasted one season, but it was something that the network had high hopes for. It starred Eva Marie Saint from Vertigo, you know, a, a, one of, a classic a actress of the. Um, was what was the, the premise? She, yeah, yeah. So what was the premise? She was an alien that crash landed into a family's home. Or... Uh, uh, not seeing it. Hmm. It's, yeah. It doesn't uh, mention anything about a garage. Well, I don't know what the hell I was doing this Monday night then. I must have just been crushed to not be able to watch Alf uh, and be like, what, what the hell? What's going on? Might you have been revisiting them via video cassette? May It's possible. We did have an early beta VCR where we would tape things off television so it's possible so you were having you were having your own willie's garage episode that you weren't filming and you had no co-host but other than that you have not changed at all i've been doing this show for 40 years george okay it's just now there's somewhat of an audience right uh well thanks for uh, uh joining us again in willie's garage we are back to our like alf was to our regularly scheduled broadcast next week it's a funny episode i watched ahead it's a funny one so uh, uh join us for that um, and uh, we'll, we'll see you next what's, time. What's our sign off now? I believe it's Bite Wind. Okay, great. Bite Wind, everybody. Bite Wind. Come crashing with